Charlie, it's yours. Uh, it's my pleasure to introduce our next speaker for today. Uh, Jason, please tell us about your living history. Thank you. Uh, thank you for the introduction and uh, and for the invitation um, to this uh, this really amazing series, which I've I've been following basically for its whole uh, history. I'm especially uh, honored and intimidated to be following uh, uh, Radhika Nagpal, who's been uh, you know, a scientific and a professional hero and, uh, and guide to me. So, um, but uh, I thought I'd uh, uh, tell you how I got to where I am now, which is at the University of Oregon, where I'm in the physics department. Uh, but uh, my story starts uh, in a childhood in Kerala, South India. Um, Kerala means uh, land of coconut trees. There were a lot of coconut trees around where I, I, I grew up. Um, and uh, uh, you know, to give you some context, if you're familiar with the book, The God of Small Things, uh, which uh, is from the, from the late 90s, um, that book is set in my community, the Syrian Christian community of South India. Um, and uh, that could give you a sense if you're familiar of, of, of uh, uh, what life is growing up for me. So I went to uh, what's called an English medium school. Uh, my schooling was in English. I really liked uh, science and math. And I really liked tinkering with things. And I, I could find on the internet this picture of a um, an electronic kit, which uh, really was a, uh, was a passion of mine uh, for many years growing up. Uh, my uncle and aunt got me this uh, this kit, and you know you, you get to assemble circuits. And uh, I spent many, many, uh, many hours uh, playing with electronics. Uh, another passion um, growing up was uh, airplanes, specifically model airplanes. So my parents uh, were both uh, academics. My my, my father uh, was a mechanical engineer, uh, and he would build model aircraft uh, growing up. Uh, sorry, in, in college, and um, I, I tried to build them, but I never could get them to fly because I never had the right materials. Uh, but uh, I liked science, I liked building things, so it was natural that I would, uh, uh, the natural course, I thought, was to be an engineer. Uh, but then I got buried by uh, preparing for the big entrance exams that, that uh, students in India have to write to get into engineering school. Uh, and I kind of lost, uh, um, I, I didn't appreciate learning something for the sake of an exam as opposed to for the sake of knowledge. And so I, I rebelled a little bit. I found a, um, a scholarship program for the last few years of high school um, run by Singapore Airlines that sent uh, Indian students to Singapore. Uh, and I finished high school there uh, away from the stress of the uh, of those, uh, those uh, entrance exams. Uh, Singapore, it turns out, also has a lot of coconut trees. Um, but uh, after high school, um, I decided, well, I wanted to be an engineer. Uh, I learned about this amazing American invention called financial aid, which meant that uh, I could actually uh, potentially go to the United States, you know, which is not something I could afford to do uh, to go to college in the US. Um, I went to, to Princeton uh, University. I major, I declared my major as mechanical and aerospace engineering because that's what I thought I wanted to do. Um, the foliage is a little different uh, in, in, in New Jersey. Um, and, uh, but uh, what I realized uh, uh, by my second year was that, um, you know, while I was taking all of these engineering courses, I was also taking the, uh, the physics uh, courses, uh, you know, the, 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 the fundamentals. And I realized that I really liked, um, uh, you know, the, the physics aspect uh, underneath uh, the engineering courses uh, uh, much more than the engineering itself. And so I switched over to physics my sophomore year and that's around when I also got involved in, um, in, in research. So my research started out in, in optics in the applied physics department at Princeton, kind of overlapping uh, science and engineering. Uh, I studied uh, quantum casket lasers and uh, solitons and nonlinear materials. Um, and uh, this was mainly computational. I, 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 I did uh, some, uh, some, some theory and a lot of computation. I really got uh, I learned and got familiar with a set of tools that then actually opened up uh, a whole uh, a whole range of, of topics later on, uh, a whole range of subfields later on uh, in my career, um, including uh, my first foray into uh, what you'd call condensed matter physics uh, was uh, in my senior year. I worked with Professor Robin Butt on uh, electronic states of disordered uh, disordered systems. Um, I was just looking through my uh, my senior thesis, and this was back in the day when GitHub wasn't you know ubiquitous. My thesis actually has uh, uh, an appendix with just pages and pages of code printed out. I have no idea what I was planning to do with that, but but there it is. There's the code. 
Um, but um, after my, I got my physics degree, um, I decided uh, that I really like research. I wanted to continue in the field of, uh, of materials, uh, maybe engineering adjacent. Uh, I also had to go somewhere where that was public transportation because I could not drive. Uh, so I moved to Cambridge, Massachusetts. I attended Harvard University um, in the applied physics PhD program. Uh, I, I, the, the, the pull to engineering was, was, still, was still there even though I had switched over. Um, and uh, the foliage uh, about the same, uh, but I got to work with Professor David Nelson uh, in physics, who's also in the biophysics program and in the applied physics um, department. Uh, and David, uh, for those of you who know him, has, uh, really brought, has really broad interests, and he was the first to uh, make me realize that being a scientist doesn't really have to be about one thing, it can be about many things. And so my thesis was about a few different things, um, about capillary action, uh, putting things together, uh, about uh, thin elastic shells, uh, buckling and fluctuating, uh, and about working uh, closely. I, I, I did theory and computation, but I worked closely with experimentalists on uh, these systems involving elasticity and curvature. Um, and uh, so this this uh, this was where, where I got uh, into what I uh, what is now called soft uh, condensed matter physics, not thinking about electrons, but thinking about mechanics. Uh, and uh, thinking of potential uh, applications to biology. Um, so during this time, uh, life happened as well. Um, uh, I got married and my partner was and still is um, a high energy physicist. Uh, she had to be at CERN in Switzerland. So we got married and moved to different countries, but in Europe, uh, I went to the Netherlands uh, where now uh, the, the, the vegetation looks like this. And uh, there were a lot of easy jet flights between the Netherlands and Switzerland uh, uh, on, the, on the weekends. Uh, but during the week, I worked with Professor Vincenzo Vitelli um, on a slightly different area still within uh, soft condensed matter physics, uh, where we started to bring in ideas and tools from quantum condensed matter, particularly top topology, band structures, topological defects, and use them to control mechanics and elasticity. Um, and uh, uh, during this time, I uh, uh, I, uh, I also built uh, some things in the lab, uh, even though I, I wasn't still I'm a, a theorist. Uh, I also got to work on uh, other statistical physics projects, and I had my first uh, biophysics um, experience working on understand the elasticity and fluctuations of the adenovirus capsid. Um, uh, so uh, at this stage, um, you know, life again required that we move uh, back to the U.S. Uh, my partner had two years of a fellowship at Berkeley National Lab to complete. Uh, so I moved uh, also to the Bay Area among the Redwoods, uh, working with uh, Professor Oscar Halicek on uh, um, expanding populations and uh, you know, models, uh, population genetics models of expanding populations driven by long range dispersal. Uh, and uh, then uh, we had uh, this, uh, uh, these, uh, these combined uh, ideas. And for the next step, you know, by this point, you know, we had a family. Uh, being in the same place was important. Uh, but we uh, decided to see if uh, academia, we could make academia work. And we could. Uh, we both found faculty jobs at the University of Oregon, uh, where I am now, uh, with, uh, with a lot of Douglas fir trees around me. Um, so that's uh, you know that's that's my trajectory, uh, and uh, I, I thought uh, you know uh, uh, thinking about what uh, to take away from this uh, from this uh, journey. Well, there's no uh, you know there's no sense in which there's one way to become a scientist to become a biophysicist. Uh, but uh, um, I, I hope what uh, my experience uh, says to is that this is one particular way you could get here. I was just that it's really okay. Uh, to be to be versatile, um, you know. I uh, at times I'm a, a physicist, at times I'm an engineer. I uh, work on sometimes I work on biology. Uh, uh, sometimes I've worked on uh, material science. And uh, I used to think that you know the only way to make it as a physicist was to know one thing really well. But uh, I uh, I found a way to make it work uh, to know some tools really well and be able to apply them uh, to a versatile set of um, uh, a, a set of systems. Um, uh, I also found that uh, I never really had a life plan. Um, it's not that I knew uh, early on where I was going to end up. At every stage, I thought about what uh, was most appealing to me at the time, both professionally and from the point of view of uh, work-life balance, and I was able to follow that. 
Uh, and that uh, has, has served me well and uh, gotten me around the world in many exciting places. Um, and uh, I also uh, found that, um, you know, maybe going back to the, the picture of a glossy brochure, uh, when I started out uh, in grad school, I had saw a lot of glossy brochures. I wasn't sure I fit in there. Uh, family was important to me. Uh, um, and uh, being able to live where I wanted to live was important to me. Uh, but I found a way uh, certainly to make that work uh, and now, uh, of course, I realize that uh, you know academia is one of the few jobs where you can actually uh, find a job in the, the corner of the world that you need to be, or uh, be as versatile as you want to be in terms of your interests, uh, and be able to find that work-life balance, which is maybe uh, hard to find in many other um, other fields. So uh, that is my um, uh, story, and uh, um, thank you again for uh, for inviting me. Thank you for a fantastic talk, Jason, um, and I'm applauding uh, on behalf of the uh, audience. Um, so the uh, first question, I guess, is uh, going off of the, the last slide that you showed, um, talking about being versatile, being reactive. This is not always viewed as a positive trait. So how did you come to, to that appreciation yourself that you view these as, as strengths? Yeah, I guess um, I I only uh, I I just followed what I wanted to at the time. You know, science had to work in the constraints and in the context of my life, and um, now I'm here. <laughs> so so it was uh, I can look back and say, well, at least for me, uh, you know, following maybe not uh, a a textbook or a glossy brochure version of the path worked well. Um, so. Uh, I guess I just wanted to say if, you know, the, you know, science uh, accepts a large, uh, has a space for a, a large uh, variety of personalities of individuals. And if uh, you find yourself being drawn to versatile interests, uh, and if you don't have a life plan, your life planned out for the next decade, that's okay. That's, uh, that doesn't mean that science is not for you. Great, great. Uh, thank you again. Uh, and uh, putting again. First, thank you.